Well, what a delight to welcome back to 100 Hundley Street, Shanti Feldhahn, who is a Harvard grad. She is a writer. She is a researcher, a speaker. But ladies and gentlemen, she's with us today with a book that she's written that I think is going to make uh, a lot of folks talk. Shanti, this book is called Through a Man's Eyes, Helping Women Understand the Visual Nature of Men. What are you saying here, helping women understand the visual nature of men? The stage is yours, and welcome. You're, you're very kind, thank you. You know, it's interesting, it's, it's, it's such a complex topic, it's easy to, to misunderstand. Um, we as women don't understand how men are wired visually. Um, there's a, a sort of a difference in our brain wiring that makes most of us as women just not even get what this culture is like for our men. And by the way, one of the things, can I clarify right up front? Yeah. <clears throat> it's really it's really important for me to say uh, before we get started I w one of the things we say is that men are responsible to make the right choices and it's actually not okay to take that you know second third you know look it's that that is not necessary let me <laughs> let me say that very clearly it's not necessarily something that we say is okay right. but what we do try to get women to understand um, is that there is a temptation that is universal to all men. And it is so critical for us to understand at least the temptation and then recognize that then the choice that the man makes from that point is totally his responsibility. Um, so here's what I'd love to convey to the women um, about just how important this is to understand. This is something that men today deal with in our culture, this sort of visual temptation Absolutely. every single day, multiple every, times a day, every single hour. in every it's environment, yep. in every environment, including in the church, oh. in a grocery store, oh. at work. Yeah. It's, and we women are, ironically, completely blind to it because our brains are wired differently. And for the women out there to recognize this isn't just about your husband or your boyfriend. This is also about your son who's growing up in a culture that's filled with these temptations. And how do you work with your son to help him learn how to handle those temptations well from the beginning and maybe prevent some of the problems that have reached out and grabbed our men? God created women and, and, and men differently. Yeah. Your presupposition, men are wired differently. They're yeah. wired toward visualization and, and yeah. different kinds of things that make men unique. How are women wired differently so that they don't even, or is, or is, so there, is it more this. toward emotion? Is it more toward relationship? Uh, yeah. What's the difference as we, as we get a little deeper here? Well, yeah, here's, the, here's what we tend not to know about the, how we're wired versus how men are wired. So it turns out that the way the male brain is wired, he processes life very visually in a way that women tend to process life more emotionally and verbally. And literally our brains are wired so that if, for example, let me just say, if I, if I were to see my, um, my son wrestling with something in school and I, I would have emotions about that, I would wanna talk about it. I'd have feelings and it would be hard to, to go home and you know, not wanna talk to my husband about what those things that I experienced that day and what I felt when I saw my son you know, do something really special or, or whatever. That's just the way I'm wired. I, I can't not have those feelings, Absolutely right? Was. So and it, what the, the neuroscientists have found is that, yeah, men have a little bit of that. It's not that you don't have feelings about those things, but you process life in the way that you see things. And those create, those, the things that you see create emotions within you that we women don't really understand. And that way that you process life verbally I mean, excuse me, the way that you process life visually, Visual, yeah. um, it actually is some, there's something about the brain science that we women absolutely need to know. And here's what it is. It turns out that there's a part of the brain that is activated in men when they see some of these sites that they view very sexually. Um, like, for example, you know, the woman who's not wearing much, you know, or the Victoria's Secret sign, you know, right. models at the store yeah. or... Um, or whatever the things that come up on television and just instantly you know, up and gone before you can look away, those sites activate a center in the brain that is not activated when women see an attractive man. It's a, 
it activates the center in the brain that all of us have experienced when um, you, you know if you're hungry and you walk into a room and you see all this great food sure. across the room and you have this sort of gut level draw to that. It's a sense of that, I want that. That's this part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens lighting up. That is the part of the brain that is lighting up when a man sees a woman who's drawing overt attention to a good figure. So can a, so a woman sees a, a man whom she finds attractive, the response is, totally not, different. is not the visual, it's, it's, not it's that, more of the thought. It's a thought. And, and, and the presence that, that, oh, that is an attractive man, but I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not tempted to be staring over there and keep looking and glancing. It, it, is, it is a gut level biological draw in a man, in a woman. It's a, <laughs> he's an attractive man. It's a thought from the beginning. And here's what has to happen in the, in, in the man's mind and in his heart. When he has that gut level biological thing that's lit up in his brain and he's drawn to consume that image, it's not so much that he's attracted to that person as a person, it's literally the pleasure of looking at the image. He has to make a choice at that point. And it's basically a, do I want to linger on that? Do I want to take that second look? You know, Do I want to let mm -hmm. my thoughts go in this direction? Or... Do I say, no, I, I want to honor God in my thought life. I want to honor my wife. I want to respect that other woman, by the way, and, and look away and tear those thoughts down. And that's what we women don't necessarily understand. Because when we see an attractive man, we don't have that same gut level draw. So there's not this choice of, am I going to let my thoughts go in all these directions? We have no idea that men have this every single day. Okay, Shanti, the, the, let's fast forward, though. If... If this isn't um, the reality for guys that and, 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 and husbands yeah. uh, and, and, and their wives, if, if this isn't um, checked or there's some degree of accountability, when, when a guy looks, I, I, as a pastor, have had wives just come in and say, my husband, all he does is look at other women, you know, they stare, turn, whatever. Yeah. You're, you're saying, don't freak out about that. Well, uh, unless this thing is, uh, I need some help here. Yeah. I need some help because I mean, it's okay. It's okay to look, say, "Oh, that's a beautiful woman," uh, you know. But you know, but but if, if, when does it temptation turn into sin? And yeah. and then how does a life partner, or a wife, appropriately uh, hold the husband accountable while at the same time understanding that this is yeah. how, as you state in the book, you're, you and your uh, co-author Craig Ross say you're wired. Men are wired. So he, here's the, <clears throat> the most important distinction for women to recognize. And again, let's be real clear on what we say in the book because we don't say it's okay for men to look. The lingering. That lingering glance, that choice to look, where that choice to let the. Sin. That is where temptation becomes sin. Mm -hmm. What we as women have to understand, and this is that distinction, is that a woman sometimes thinks this. You know, that kind of temptation that just is automatic, that that is sin, and it's not. We know so there's, there's an over, a, So there's, there's an over, a bit of an overreaction there by some women on Well, that. Here's, here's the distinction. The question is, does he have a problem with his thought life? Is this, has this become a habit where then he does allow those thoughts to go? Or is he an honorable man? Who just says, that's who is, a, she's such a pretty lady, uh, yeah, well, such a nice lady. Yeah. Or an honorable man uh -huh. who is just being hit every day in this culture and Honorable men on the spectrum, some of them have made rigorous choices from childhood. They have a yeah. very good way they of build fences, uh, they, hold they, each other, hold they hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. But even those men sometimes have this knee jerk. I mean, sometimes, I mean, don't you as a woman, I tell the women, don't you kind of get startled <laughs> by the way some people dress or whatever, yeah, too? Yeah. The, the key for women to understand is just being a man is going to create some issues here and we have to understand. Let's let's get to the real key. So here. don't get upset with to, a guy being a guy. Well, don't get upset with a guy being a guy, but expect the best of him, but don't believe that just because he's wired with a male brain, which God said is good. Yeah, that he's having an affair, that he's hooked on porn, that he is Correct. Uh, running and, around on her. And you know what? Uh, let's just say that you're a wife listening to this and you know your husband has a struggle with porn. Uh -huh. Let's say you're listening to this and you're concerned about your son. You found yeah, him, yeah. you know, searching online and, right. and found some of these images that they're right. looking at. Here's what we know. We know that women don't get this because we have never experienced that temptation that men face every single day. 
we have found that it is absolutely imperative to understand what is going on in the male brain in order to be able to have some sort of empathy for the man, not endorse any bad choices that he's made, but to be able to understand it so that you can be safe to talk to. Because if your husband is struggling with this, there is almost no way that men can get free of this if their wife is not supportive. Shanti Feldhahn, thank you very much for being here. Um, I'm grateful for uh, Christ followers who will take on the tough subjects uh, that we can have conversations. And I'm grateful for platforms like 100 Huntley Street where we can we can talk about these things. I hope you come back and see us. I'd love to. And uh, yeah. much, much success with the book. It's called Through a Man's Eyes. You see it there. It's available on our e-store. And we hope that you will purchase the book, read it, and uh, that you will walk through this book carefully. And it can help you. It can help your marriage. It can help your family. Shanti Fellow, thank you so much. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah.